<laughs> okay, let's get, let's get it started. Hi everybody, thanks for coming. I'm uh, Uncle Steve Sandy of the School of Architecture. I want to start by acknowledging with respect the Onondaga Nation, firekeepers of the Haudenosaunee, the indigenous peoples on whose land, on, uh, on whose land Syracuse University now sits. Um, I, I'm going to introduce the introducer. The introducer always needs an introduction. Uh, that's going to be Valerie, uh, Professor Herrera tonight. Um, we're very lucky to have a terrific speaker tonight who gave us a, um, who was here before, and uh, Professor Herrera will give a more extensive introduction. I just want to remind everyone that, um, that the lecture tonight of Nathan, uh, that Nathan Williams will give is part of a series of lectures we're doing on Friday for uh, uh, drawing workshops. Um, we have one more in a couple of weeks. Um, Iman Fayette will give a lecture also on Friday and do a workshop. But um, Professor William, um, uh, Nathan Williams will give a lecture tonight and then we'll do a workshop over the weekend and another workshop uh, in two weeks, not next weekend, but the week, the week after. So um, we're very happy everybody is, is, is attending uh, the Friday lectures. I want to also just uh, mention that um, next semester we will invite back all of the workshop leaders and do a small exhibition of all the work that was produced in the workshops and have a round table discussion just about the state of drawing in the schools of architecture, especially after everyone's seen all the lectures and after, um, after we've seen all the work. So without further ado, I'm gonna int um, I'll welcome uh, Professor Herrera to introduce our great speaker tonight and friend, uh, Nathan Williams. Valerie. Oh, Can you hear me in the back? Okay, perfect. All right, well, welcome everyone. This is the um, third drawing workshop um, of the series that Michael has um, put together. Uh, I'm very excited for you all to um, uh, be here for Nathan. Um, I'm a huge fan of the work, and I'm excited to see what the students produce in this, in this series. So, um, Nathan has, as you all know, has been a visiting critic here before, so some of you may be familiar with his work, for those of you who are not. Um, Nathan Williams is a, a Brooklyn, New York-based artist and designer and research, researcher who strives to translate, transform, and remix investigations of African transatlantic diasporic creative theory, processes, and practice. Williams aspires to both document, develop art, well, I'll say art and architectural. I, I, I like the fancy, the, the fancy uh, way that you did the T there. Um, in the design of the image, object, space, and place, uh, which I think is really wonderful because this is a continuation of a theme that we've been exploring for a couple of weeks um, with our visiting lecturers. Much of William's recent work has um, been mixed media collage, where he samples and layers conceptual elements of black Atlantic arts whether in rhythmically embodied movement, visual, musical, lyrical, or spiritual productions as layers in his creative process. His built work focuses on small details informed by research and his creations are um, inseparable, informed by his committed investigation and documentation of African diasporic creative theory and process exploring layered narratives of, of signification, continuity, disruption, samples, repetitions, and all creative forms. Um, his research has led to extensive connections to living and learning in African enclaves in the Americas. Williams has, been immer has immersed himself in research projects um, in, in um, African diasporic enclave communities in and around Puerto Rico. Um, the Dominican Republican, uh, a Republic, sorry, uh, Colombia, um, Mexico, London, France, Switzerland, you, you've been all over, India. Um, and so his artwork has been exhibited both um, in the United States and internationally. Um, and most recently, the panels 
um, of Williams' work has been um, on display with the hip hop architecture um, with uh, Professor um, Sekou Cook. Um, and so I want to go down here for a moment because one of the interesting um, inspirations to Williams' work is his background as a DJ which is, is, I think, really starts to show up in um, a, lot of, a lot of his collage work. Um, so this was introduced while he was a student at Cornell University School of Architecture. Um, and I think without further ado, I will introduce our, our guest speaker. Please give a warm welcome to Nathan. So I'm going to kind of repeat what was, has just been said, but just to introduce, we're going to show a little, I'm going to show a little bit of work in general, and then get to a project that I've been working on for the past, feels like five months, maybe more, maybe less. So I said, as an artist, researcher, and writer, I strive to translate, transform, and remix investigations of African trans transatlantic diasporic creative theory, process, and practice to create new remixed revision work. Um, my work really began with developing hip hop architecture language in the design of object space place, um, which has expanded into all aspects of mixed media collages and sculptures, where I um, try and DJ layers of, of conceptual elements of the Black Atlantic arts, whether it's in rhythm or in words or in music or um, spiritual production as creative process. Like that place that I started in hip hop, the research there led me to um, research more into, as opposed to it's this moment, it's this thing, it's a collective process. And this is just another wave of this collective process more as a, um, a continuum of something that's much greater. And that's what's led to a lot of the travel that I've done to see the overlap of what you're doing here and what other people are doing there, what's the same and what's different. What's the languages that are, are being used, spoken, um, visually, uh, the food that you eat, everything. So my work is reflective of my personal relationship to the African traditions and arts and spirituality, our communities and the parallel communities with whom we may share interconnectivity. Um, our workshop is exploring architecturally remixed media techniques of personal composite collage through African diaspora creative theory as a framework for making. Techniques related to the rhythmic, sonic, and visual practices <coughs> such as the DJ process of sample layer repeat, the textile process of rhythmic quilting, and griot model, modal, modalities of, of storytelling, will be introduced to develop new hybrid interpretations of visual representation, syncopated mappings, and their multi-voiced -voiced fractals in, will inform spatial narratives of com composited handcrafted, this is important, handcrafted, um, now nah, I lost my place. Um, handcrafted productions, basically, as opposed to staying within the computer. And this investigations will challenge relevant materials as well as strategies of representation of history, culture, gender, sexuality, race, and place, spirit, and space. Future spaces will be invoked employing techniques in continuity towards innovations in spatial narrative and visualization. I'm about to show the work now, or some work of mine. Is my Fab 13, Fab 14 here? One, two. All right, we're gonna work on that. 
in general, I've had a wide range of influences that cross disciplines and media. Um, the ones who I find most pronounced in the work that I'm going to show you today are Elizabeth Catlett, Ramir Bearden, Aaron Douglas, Zora Neale Hurston, DJ Rich Medina, Wilfredo Lamb. I forgot to list Langston Hughes, but different types of storytellers, different narratives. And the way that I create is through scroll. What you're going to probably be seeing is different segments of the scroll. What we're doing in our workshop is, is a scroll in the end that um, we'll decide if we chop up or not or re rearrange, reconfigure. I'm going to share a small mix of my work. Um, and what has become an extensive project that I'm calling Signifying Trickster Choreographies, inspired by um, an essay written by Andres Hernandez for Flux about Br'er Rabbit, one of the tricksters. Professor Hernandez, AKA, AKA the Signifying Monk, is a talented creator on countless levels. He's a good friend, an old classmate, and fellow DJ. Um, he brought up this idea that he would trace and track the strategy of signifying as a, as a spatial navigation that, is, um, that falls into a pattern uh, in the Black Atlantic stories. And there's three others that we, or two others that we, were, we decided to look at. And I chose Eshu Elikbar, who's Yoruba Lukumi. And um, what we're working on in our, in our uh, workshop is Anansi, who's an Ashanti trickster spider spirit. Okay, so I'm gonna show some things and I may stop or I may not. This is the beginning where I started just taking samples and repeating them in my hip hop explorations. This falls into that. These are some of those which you may have seen already. But these are some of the beginning types of collages which are in some ways really simple, but they're looking at space and cultural identity where the, the spaces that are used are based on historic things, kind of replacing the, making a place of life, using space that's unused under the train, but also referencing the, the idea of strange fruit. In each of these collages, I try and put something that feels present, real, and then something that's also surreal. There's usually going to be some lines in my drawings, and they're talking about it's um, not just construction lines, but they're almost the spiritual marking of, of, the, of each piece that I could remove the piece, and you have the lines, and it's always going to be different. That's the signature of the piece. This piece is when I started to get a little more, adding more layers to, to my drawings. It started as, a, as a, a, comp, a composition of buildings, talking about that, that, uh, that, that energy of Legba. This is a piece that for a show on Haiti that was shown at the Caribbean Cultural Center. No, no, at the Museum of African Mukata. Museum of Contemporary African Design. Thank you. Um, but basically, it's just looking at this series of people at the intersection, which is where he hangs out. And you could see him kind of repeating. This is a long scroll. This is, I believe, number, uh, there's, there's, there's 86 of these. And they got chopped up. And there's certain things that get repeated. There's a certain repetition that ties this thing that's really very long and the thing over here you would think wouldn't connect to the thing over there, but you find ways that you can connect these, these thoughts. Sometimes we're putting things together that shouldn't go together and you find that out. This piece is called Nightmares Haunt. Nightmares Haunt. 
And this was done after the murder of Trayvon Martin. Um, I was looking at kind of taking these different samples and ideas of what this building look like and feel like. I think since I've been living in, this, in New York City, a lot of my pieces have this rhythm of the, just the windows and the buildings. There's a certain height to it that starts to frame the space that you're in, which is, it feels very different um, if you lived on a plane or, or on top of a mountain. In this, there's different things that are completely cartoonish and magical and other things that are very real. I take samples from people that I love. I was really inspired by The Block by um, Ramir Bearden. And you start to look at who's the watcher, who's being watched, what's real, what's not real, who's floating, who's alive, who's not. And there's a lot of text in there, and that's inspired for me by Basquiat and the ideas of palimpsest, and that, that we can load both word and image into these works. This one is literally word and image to form city. It's called Cross Words, Cross Worlds. And it started off from me blowing up a crossword puzzle as a base for this collage. This piece was a commission for, it's one of three panels for a music video in Geneva, Switzerland. And they were looking to play off of ideas of the hear no evil, speak no evil, you know, the three monkeys. And they were comparing that to the history of society and how it developed in Switzerland and held down artists. And they interviewed a bunch of artists um, in front of these panels. And then the music video was other parts of it. This is a detail from that. These are, these are really big and it's pieces of paper about this size. So it took, it took months. And I did two, like I started this in, in Brooklyn and then finished it there. I think this is where I started to get into textile more and looking at the ways that it can, they can combine or, or come apart and checking the rhythms that, that talk to each other or don't talk to each other. I'm one of those people that will find a book on the street and I will take it and find something in it and make something new from it. There's a series of, of photos that I've discovered that I found and um, I was thinking about how do we celebrate these things? These people seem absolutely magical and powerful and I wanted to kind of highlight that and how does that happen? Within that I'm using different kinds of color codification to talk about special, specific energies um, that have come to the Americas. And so I make up these titles, but I'll take a little bit of Yoruba, a little Kikongo, and then throw some Spanish on it, or some French. But the way it's written, if you know, then you know what energy is. They're talking about twins. He's a gateway energy. It's also highlighting people who don't usually get highlighted. In this one, I took a bunch of photos of space, different spaces, and then did kind of theory collages of them and photocopy them black and white and recontextualize them. They're talking about, I think, four specific spaces, but the recontextualization of them makes them look completely different. This detail is a piece that's, I think, four by eight. And um, there's been 
three more that have happened since then. I don't have the image when you're further out, but it's wild how it starts to look like you're not sure if it's textile, but then it has depth in some ways that it starts to read almost like a Noli plan or just a, um, an aerial. Okay. So there's many examples of what Henry Louis Gates has termed as signifying and tricksters. Those who use the sociocultural strategy of signifying, whether for survival, educating, or just pure jokes. Um, that's one of the things that he wrote about in the book, uh, The Signifying Monkey, um, discussing the choreography, choreographies of how they move. I thought it would be fascinating to compare the all of these movements. So what I thought was gonna be three people working on something ended up being, I worked on these things. So this is what you're gonna be looking at. This is what I'm kinda of trying to push through. I think I'm almost done. We'll see. together you see all of these different players in their different forms there was um, Esho Lekbar who was in the red and black and the Nancy the spider you saw and Br'er Rabbit you saw too and looking at those different movements those movements are really also found in like capoeira and laja in breakdance there's there's a play there's a competition there's a game that's happening and that's why I put those together to do this, I started looking at Lapin, no Lapin notation. So it's the Lapin notation, sorry. So the study of the movement of dance was really the documentation. And looking at these different pieces and overlapping them. On the one hand, that should be super easy if it was one dance for each. However, Eshoe Barra has 256 personalities. So he or she, because it could be either way, I wanted to have each one of those dances. So I was overlaying 256 on top of each other, and then Anansi's movements, and then on top of that, the movements of Br'er Rabbit, how he plays games and tricks to end up into the briar patch to, to save his life from the fox and the bear. So these are some of the, I was using some different both Ashanti, like basically Ghanaian dance, Yoruba Lukumi dance, and the dances that I saw online of um, Br'er Rabbit. So these are some of the samples. Oops, not there. So with these, you see both the sound and the movements. And they're talking about space and time, right? And that's kind of how we move through buildings. It's, it's looking at space and time. I was wondering if we look at the movement through space and time, could we reverse it and then make space at a certain point? Or extrude it and see what that actually looks like. So this is, a sec this is like a little bit of one of the studies or the composite. This is like one of my composite drawings.
this is when it got so flat and so many lines that I was like, oh, maybe I should spray a little, do a little, add a little spray paint, which I thought, I, I'm not sure it was a good idea. It was a little heavy handed. So I wasn't seeing the place or the spaces. And so at this point, I put it into the computer. And I was like, OK, there's all these different points, and everybody's got things going on. It's time to start looking at X marked a spot. Like, this is the intersection. This is the cross section. This is the point where something happens. So this now is, this is a segment of something that I think is like 16 feet. Maybe a little more, but that whole X marks the spot thing still wasn't doing for me. So I was thinking, okay, what if I look at intersection again and have this self-reference self and intersect upon itself? Which is the detail form. And then I wanted to occupy the space. So that's where this guy came from. So there's a bunch of these. Actually, I double, I double intersected at the top and at the bottom so that that starts to carve out space. And the X marks the spot might be the, the thing that you either use or, or have to evade, run from. And I let that go. Oh, also, I'm bringing in that white ink to try and pull it together. That's kind of my web. The long drawing that I had done in black and white, I decided to run four rows of and start to see where they collide. There's a this certain push and pull that I'm using um, textile tact uh, techniques with. Um, this is a longer piece, and this is when I was testing what if I chopped it and just put them next to each other as opposed to let them run, because it was difficult just um, going through. So this is a series of, of the drawing. This is the rabbit hole that I fell into. I ended up, I stayed long, and that's, that's the piece that I think I finished, that I showed our team, a small print of. I brought a, um, I think I have a 10 footer here of this. So that's what had happened. That is, I think, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, tonight, as we do with all of the workshop lectures, we'll reconvene back downstairs and have a conversation, and there's food, and so join us down there now.